Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're going to be continuing our discussion of uh, molecular structure. And very often in chemistry, it's helpful if we can visualize what chemical bonds look like. Oh, by the way, if you haven't done so, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoy the video, I'll give me a like also. Now, when we take a look at uh, visualizing chemical bonds. Let's imagine we have a single bond, just a, a typical single bond between two carbon atoms, just a very typical uh, bond that you'd see. It might look something like this. Now, of course, you can't really see a bond, and, and, and it's kind of difficult to see, but if we could, it might you might see something like this, where the electrons are basically uh, buzzing around directly between those two carbon atoms. So that seems to be, you know, fairly normal. There are no surprises there. That might have been what you expected. But when we go over to a double bond, let's imagine that we have a carbon-carbon double bond. So notice that in a carbon-carbon double bond, we have two bonds that we have to stick those four electrons into. Well, one of those bonds is going to be having the electrons buzzing between the two carbon atoms, and then in the other bond, it looks like they're kind of looped. They're kind of buzzing around in a different direction. So this is, might be what you could see if you were to have a, perhaps a time-lapse photo of a double bond. Now, if we had a triple bond, triple bonds between, let's say, carbon and carbon, or carbon and nitrogen or something else, and this time there are six electrons that have to be fit in between those two atoms, and those three bonds are going to need a little extra room. Well, we have one of those bonds that will be buzzing around directly between the two atoms, like we had in the first two examples. And then we have one of these looped bonds where the electrons are buzzing around in this kind of a looped format. And then the third bond in which they're looped also, but notice this is in the third direction, this third dimension. It's almost like it's coming out of the page. So we can see that. Now, we give names for these, and of course this is not a perfect model, this is just a model that helps us to visualize what these bonds might look like. Those straight bonds, the ones that are uh, found directly between the atoms, we call those sigma bonds. So this single bond, we could say it consists of one sigma bond. Now, the a double bond has a sigma bond as well, but it also has one of these looped bonds, and we call those pi bonds. And so a double bond is going to consist of a sigma and a pi. A triple bond, on the other hand, has one of those straight bonds, but it has two of those looped bonds. And so a triple bond consists of a sigma bond and two pi bonds. Now, you might have also noticed that I have these atoms drawn in such a way that I'm trying to demonstrate bond length as well. So the single bond seems to be the longest of these, and then the double bond is a little bit shorter and stronger too, as it turns out. And the triple bond is the shortest and the strongest of all three of those. So if we want to review here, we can take a look at what's going on here. Now, when I say sigma and pi, a sigma bond is basically just the result of overlapping s orbitals, and the pi bonds are the result of overlapping p orbitals. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than this, but in AP Chemistry, we can keep it fairly simple. And if you know that information, you will do just fine on those questions on the AP exam. And to be honest, on pretty much any question they could ask you about sigma and pi bonds uh, at this level. So, in review, just a few observations about this. The bond length. Sometimes it'll ask about bond length on, an, on a question. Single bonds are the longest. Uh, triple bonds are the shortest, and they're also the, the strongest of the three. Double bonds are kind of in the middle. They have a, an intermediate bond length and an intermediate bond strength as well. Whenever we see a single bond, every single bond is a sigma bond. We'll do some examples here in a minute so we can practice. If you ever see a double bond, it's one sigma and one a pi bond. So that's every... Uh, every single time you have a, a double bond. Lastly, when you see a triple bond, those have one sigma bond and two pi bonds. So anytime you see a triple, that's what it is. So let's try some examples. How many sigma and pi bonds 
are in this molecule right here? Well, first of all, we see that there is a single bond here. Every single bond is a sigma bond, so I'm going to label that. That little thing looks like an O, that's, a, that's the Greek letter sigma in lowercase. Now, the triple bond is, if you will recall, a sigma and two pi. So I'm going to label that as such. And so we have two sigmas and two pi's in that molecule right there. Now how about this molecule? This is a bit more complex. We have a, an organic molecule here. Now it looks more difficult, but really it's the exact same thing. Don't make it any more difficult than what it needs to be. So every single bond is a sigma bond. And I see one, two, three, four, five, six single bonds. So I'm going to label all those as sigma. I see a couple of double bonds in here as well. There's a double bond right here, and there's a double bond right here as well. Double bonds are always sigma and pi, so I'm going to label those like that. I also have a triple bond. A triple bond is always a sigma and two pi, so I'm going to label those. And now I just have to add it up. So sigmas, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sigma bonds. And I am seeing one, two, three, four pi bonds. So it's nine sigma and four pi. So with this information, you should be able to figure out how many sigma and pi bonds are in any molecule that, that they could ever give you on the AP exam and in almost all of chemistry as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you've learned something. Uh, if you have, once again, give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so, where you can enjoy the entire AP Chemistry curriculum right here on Jeremy Krug's YouTube channel. So join me again. I want you to get that five. Join me again so we can learn some more chemistry, chemistry together.